So we're finally getting the Snyder Cut. Officially, it will be known as Zack Snyder's Justice League, signifying that yes, this is exactly what Zack Snyder wanted to do, or at least as close to what he wanted to do with the original superhero super team back in 2017. I mean, this title does make it abundantly clear that this is Zack Snyder's Justice League, not Joss Whedon's, not George Miller's, and certainly not your or my version of the Justice League. I mean, if it was my Justice League, it would be the original seven members versus the Legion of Doom, and then you save all the apocalypse stuff for like, movie three or four. Now, of course, the reason why there's a whole big hoopla over Zack Snyder's Justice League is because famously, Zack Snyder never got to finish Justice League. He left production towards the end due to personal reasons. Warner Brothers then, in an effort to try and get the movies finished and then out the door for theaters, put together their own version of the movie that was obviously very different from what Zack Snyder would have originally wanted to release. Now, what happened with Justice League, i.e. the studio taking control of the movie and reworking it so that it doesn't look anything like what the director originally wanted it to be, it's not unique for this particular film. There are countless stories of Hollywood studios taking movies away from their directors and reworking it into something else entirely. And more so, this isn't even really unique for the DC Cinematic Universe. Yes, today we are talking about Suicide Squad and its own legendary director's cut, the David Ayer cut, because that seems like a really good use of my time this week. You know, Wonder Woman was originally supposed to come out in theaters this week. Yeah, 2020, just all kinds of sucks. Back in August of 2016, we got Suicide Squad, the third official entry in the then new DC Cinematic Universe. The movie itself was kind of unique in that it didn't really star any A-list superheroes. Batman and The Flash had cameos, but they weren't the main focus. The main focus was actually on a team of B-list and mostly unrecognizable supervillains. But that said, the movie did do shockingly well for itself. It was number one in the US box office for three weeks in a row, and it made about $746 million worldwide. That's nothing to sneeze at, especially for an untested property like this. But of course, it wasn't all roses. The movie was absolutely destroyed by critics upon release, many of them decrying it for having awful editing, uneven directing, a lousy story, the list goes on. In many regards, Suicide Squad had almost the same reception as Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice, 2016's other DC Cinematic Universe entry. That film was also hated by critics, but made a very large amount of money at the box office. Despite what critics might have said at the time, both of these films do have a very dedicated, loyal fan base to them. Some of these people are so diehard, it's honestly kind of scary. But regardless, overall, the general tone seems to be that Batman vs Superman is the much better film when compared to Suicide Squad, again, even amongst the hardcore fans. Another thing both of these movies had in common was the substantial amount of content that was removed from them before their initial theatrical release. Both movies had scenes either missing or completely rearranged to the point where there were noticeable plot holes and other various inconsistencies. In the case of Batman vs Superman, when that movie was released on DVD and Blu-ray, it was released alongside an R-rated extended cut of the film. This version saw the reinsertion of several scenes to help to greatly expand upon and explain several moments in the film, making for a more coherent and just overall better viewing experience. These scenes wound up bumping the runtime of the movie up to three hours, but it did make for a better experience. I genuinely do not like Batman vs Superman, but I can admit that the R-rated extended cut is a better movie. Still not a good movie, but at least it's a better one. Now at the very least, regardless of which version of BVS you prefer, it's very clear that this was a Zack Snyder movie through and through. It's very consistent in style and tone with his other movies, not just Man of Steel, but Sucker Punch, Watchmen, 300, movies like that. And overall, it just feels exactly like the type of movie Zack Snyder would make. 
Suicide Squad, on the other hand, doesn't really have a consistent vision. Even fans of the film have admitted that it is very clearly a mashup of styles rather than the work of one vision from one director. The film tends to seesaw between really dark and heavy moments and then right back to really lighthearted and funny moments. The story overall just seems to jump from one thing to the next with very little connecting the different plot points. It soon became pretty obvious that the theatrical release of Suicide Squad was not the entire story. It was pretty clear that there were scenes missing or rearranged in a particular way that did more to harm the movie than it did to help it. After the positive reception of the Batman vs Superman extended cut, many people assumed that Warner Brothers would do the same thing with Suicide Squad, release an extended cut on DVD and Blu-ray that presents a more cohesive version of what director David Ayer originally wanted to do with this movie. Put back all the scenes that got cut out and maybe that would help to explain some of the plot holes and other inconsistencies. And as it turns out, Warner Brothers did release an extended cut of Suicide Squad, but just barely. While the extended cut of Batman vs Superman was over half an hour longer, the extended cut of Suicide Squad only added about 13 minutes of additional footage. And what was added didn't really change anything all that much. It didn't really add to the story or fix anything from the original release. All it really did was add some more scenes featuring Harley Quinn and the Joker. But these scenes don't really have any impact on the overall narrative of the film. And other than that, the other scenes that were added were so inconsequential, I didn't even realize they were deleted in the first place. It was overall a very disappointing release, especially when you consider just what kind of a journey Suicide Squad went on from its initial conception to its final product. I mean, the film would change in style and tone just from each trailer we got, going from the more dark and somber aesthetic of the other Zack Snyder superhero films to something much more bright and colorful, almost like a Marvel movie. Perhaps most noticeably, there were scenes in the trailers that didn't make either the theatrical release or the extended cut. There's of course the scene of Katana with her eyes going completely black that isn't in either version of the movie, and perhaps more infamously, Jared Leto's Joker is never seen in his tuxedo with half his face charred off like he is in one of the trailers. They made a Funko Pop of the Joker from this scene that never made it into the final movie. It's kind of a shame, honestly. So yeah, it's obvious that a lot got cut from Suicide Squad, and it's clearly not the movie that David Ayer wanted to make in the first place. Now, I don't want to go too much into the minutia of what exactly happened behind the scenes with Suicide Squad. We'll be here all day, and that's been explained a lot better by other smarter people. Dan Olson of Folding Ideas has a great video where he goes into that, and also why the editing of Suicide Squad is Honestly, kind of bad. You should check that out. TLDR, David Ayer's initial cut of Suicide Squad was four hours long and was not very well received by the top brass at Warner Brothers. This, combined with the very negative reception toward Batman vs Superman's darker, more serious tone, caused the studio to go into panic mode and try to cut together a different version of Suicide Squad that was much more quirky and fun. Something more akin to Deadpool, which had just come out that same year and was wildly popular, or even the movie's own trailers, so much so that they even hired the studio that cut the trailers to edit the movie. Now over the years since the release of Suicide Squad, David Ayer has talked about some of his regrets with the making of this movie. He talked about how a lot of scenes didn't make it into the final product that probably should have been there. And he's talked a lot about how Jared Leto's Joker in particular got the short end of the stick. Many of Jared Leto's scenes as the Joker just left on the cutting room floor, never to see the light of day. As the hashtag released the Snyder Cut movement started to gain momentum on Twitter and then eventually in the real world, there was a small section of the fan base that was wondering if it would be possible to also get the David Ayer cut of Suicide Squad released as well. It wasn't as well known as the Snyder Cut movement, but it was there. I mean, obviously it wouldn't get as much attention as the Snyder Cut of Justice League because it's Justice League that should always get more attention than Suicide Squad. But now that we are in fact getting the mythical Snyder Cut of Justice League released next year, many people have turned their attention back to Suicide Squad. Does there exist a David Ayer cut of the movie? Will it ever see the light of day? 
Will Warner Brothers even want to release David Ayer's Suicide Squad in its entirety? Well, much like the Snyder Cut, the Ayer Cut of Suicide Squad probably does exist, but in a hard drive somewhere in the archives of Warner Brothers. Also like the Snyder Cut, it's probably in a very unfinished state. Missing special effects, music cues, and things like that. Unlike Zack Snyder and his version of Justice League, however, David Ayer never officially left production of Suicide Squad. He stayed on to oversee pretty much everything right up until the end. He was even allowed to continue working on his version of Suicide Squad while Warner Brothers was trying to overhaul everything. And Ayer has said fairly recently that finishing up his version of Suicide Squad shouldn't be that difficult to do. This sort of signifies to me that post-production work on a potential Ayer release of Suicide Squad should be a lot shorter in time than what Zack Snyder seems to require with Justice League. And David Ayer has insinuated that his version of Suicide Squad is a very different beast, much darker and more somber and moody in tone with a Joker that's actually menacing and not just kind of annoying. But does that really mean that Warner Brothers would want to even bother releasing David Ayer's Suicide Squad even if it's just on HBO Max? Granted, yes, Suicide Squad was a big hit back in 2016. Harley Quinn and the Joker were both the top Halloween choices that year. And the movie, we all forget this, but the movie won an Oscar. But overall, it just feels like nobody's really excited for Suicide Squad anymore. Yes, Warner Brothers is prepping a new movie for release sometime soon, but that movie's being directed by James Gunn and is going in a very different direction from what David Ayer initially had planned. And again, I hate to keep saying this, but Suicide Squad is not Justice League. It is not an A-level series featuring the A-level characters that can guarantee butts in seats. And I think because of that, I don't think there's enough incentive for Warner Brothers to invest in an alternate version of Suicide Squad. Especially when A, like I said before, they're working on a brand new version of Suicide Squad and they probably don't want to conflict with that. And B, the Snyder Cut of Justice League hasn't even been released yet. And we don't really know how well that's going to perform. Sure, it's popular, but is that going to guarantee people log in to HBO Max? That's a very important question Warner Brothers has to ask. Now, just like I said with the Snyder Cut of Justice League, if they were to release a David Ayer cut of Suicide Squad, I would totally watch it. Like I keep saying, I'm a fan of seeing alternate versions of movies. And it would be very interesting to see just what David Ayer had in mind for Suicide Squad. And if we're being honest, at the very least, I do think David Ayer's cut of Suicide Squad, even if it's the full four hour version of it, should be a much better movie than the one that got released in theaters. At the very least, it should be much more coherent and flow much better than the theatrical version. Still has a Joker with tattoos all over his face, but at least it's something. But it just looks like we're gonna be waiting much, much longer for David Ayer's Suicide Squad. It honestly just looks like the world has moved on from this particular version of these characters. Even David Ayer seems to have moved on from it. Yes, he did say if given the opportunity, he'd go back and finish it the way he wanted to, but he's clearly moving on to other things to work on, including another DC movie possibly. Really, the only thing we can do is just see how Zack Snyder's Justice League performs on HBO Max before we can even consider the possibility of seeing David Ayer's original version of Suicide Squad released. Until then, we probably won't see that movie for many, many more years. In the meantime, why not read some Suicide Squad comics? Those are always better. Except the new 52 run. Skip that. But what do you think about the potential air cut of Suicide Squad? Do you think it exists? Do you think it's something that you want to see? Or are you just happy with having the theatrical version as is? Let me know down below or anywhere on the internet. I do wonder if people will come at me for saying we're not gonna see the air cut of Suicide Squad anytime soon like they did for Zack Snyder's Justice League. I doubt it because it's Suicide Squad, it's nobody's favorite movie, but I've been surprised before. This week has obviously been a bit screwy, but next week we will be back to our regular schedule with new videos every Tuesday and Wednesday, and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern being Wolf Den Live. So subscribe to see all of that. 
like this video and share it with a friend, a friend who just can't get enough of that sweet, sweet Task Force X. Task Force X is another name for the Suicide Squad. They really should mention that in the movies more. Thank you all for watching. I will see you next time. Wash your hands. And for the love of God, just be nice to each other. Like, for f sake, don't be an asshole. It's not that hard to do.